All right, looking at a new article here, it shows that uh, the Greeks really do have near mythical origins. Ancient DNA reveals. Let's look in the article here. Uh, DNA analysis unearths origins of Minoans and Mycenaeans as the first major European civilizations. Ever since the days of Homer, Greeks have long idolized their Mycenaean ancestors in epic poems and classic tragedies that glorify the exploits of Odysseus, King Agamemnon, and other heroes who went in and out of favor with the Greek gods. Although these Mycenaeans were fictitious, scholars have debated whether today's Greeks descend from the actual Mycenaeans who created a famous civilization that dominated mainland Greece and the Aegean Sea from about 1600 BC to 1200 BC. Or whether the ancient Mycenaeans simply just vanished from the region. And you look at that picture, there's one of the Mycenaean women's. Now, the ancient DNA suggests that living Greeks are indeed the descendants of Mycenaeans, with only a small portion of DNA from later migrations to Greece. And the Mycenaeans themselves were closely related to the earlier Minoans. The study reveals another great civilization that flourished in the island of Crete from 2600 to 1400 BC, named for the mythical king, King Minos. Now, the ancient DNA comes from the teeth of 19 people, including 10 Minoans from Crete, dating to, from 2900 B.C. to 1700 B.C., four Mycenaeans from the archaeological site at Mycenae, and the other cemeteries on the Greek mainland, dating from 1700 B.C. to 1200 B.C., and five people from early farming and Bronze Age, from as late as 5400 BC down to 1340 BC. Cultures in Greece and Turkey. By comparing 1.2 million letters of genetic code across these genomes to those of 334 other ancient people from around the world and 30 modern Greeks, the researchers were able to plow through and plot how the individuals were related to each other. Uh, here's a picture of the Lion Gate and the entrance of uh, Mycenae. Quite cool. The ancient Mycenaeans and Moans were most closely related to each other, though, and they both got three quarters of their DNA from early farmers who lived in Greece and southwestern Anatolia, which is now part of Turkey. The team reports today in Nature. Both cultures additionally inherited DNA from people from the Eastern Caucasus region, near modern-day Iran, and or on the top of Mesopotamia, suggesting an early migration of people from the East after the early farmers settled there, but before the Mycenaeans split from the Minoans. Now, the Mycenaeans have an important difference. They had some DNA, 4 to 16 percent, from northern ancestors who came from uh, Eastern Europe or Siberia, right? This suggests that a second wave of people from the Eurasian steppe came to mainland Greece by way of Eastern Europe or Armenia, but didn't reach Crete or didn't mingle in with the people of the islands of Crete, but did with the mainland people. This uh, says Losef Lazardis, a population geneticist at Harvard University who co-led this study. Here's a dancing Minoan woman, and I think you can see that there's similarity between this and the other woman that we were looking at for. Um, slightly curlier here, here, but you hear uh, Herodotus make mentions of people that live up in this area, and the Colchians, which were the people that kept the Golden Fleece, if you remember in the other stories, and uh, said that they were uh, curly-haired and uh, a tanned people with curly hair and that uh, they were also the Egyptians, but they had curly hair like them, but that wasn't anything unique because others around us right now do. What showed him that they really were was the exact way they made linens, that they were circumcised, other things down that line, but he throws that in there, and you can see how curly her hair is and stuff, it seems like, on a natural, and we'll go right back up again real quick and take a look at that one there, and you can see her hair has quite a bit of curl to it, maybe not as much as the other one. Maybe she just didn't wrap it around a warm rod that day. That's what they used to do. Uh, even the ancient Egyptians had these deals where they would warm up a rod and then they wrap your hair around it, let it cool down, and boom, there's your ancient curling iron, believe it or not. 
Not surprisingly, the Minoans and Mycenaeans looked alike, both carrying genes for brown hair and brown eyes, although they still had green and blue in there, and people with other lighter forms, known as Xanthic or Xanthos. Artists in uh, most cultures painted dark hair, dark eyed people in frescoes and pottery who resembled each other, although two cultures spoke and wrote different languages. The Mycenaeans were more militaristic, with art replete with spears and images of war whereas Minoan art showed few signs of warfare. They also didn't used to have on their island an actual uh, a wall around it or anything. Uh, they felt confident in themselves enough to just sit there just wide open. I think later it was what helped cause some of the problem, but really what destroyed them was the uh, ancient volcano that was there of Thera. Now, because the Minoan script was used uh, hieroglyphic, some archaeologists thought that they were partially Egyptian, which does turn out to be false, although supposedly King Minos' daughter uh, and someone else's daughter too were um, co-mingled with the Egyptians into royalty or whatever somehow, you know, trading princesses and things like they used to do some, from time to time to try to make queens, to have people have, you know, uh, it really helps the bloodline out too, especially whenever you find out that they were doing a little bit of... Uh, incest there but uh, a lot of people take that totally out of context i think they symbolically married their sisters more than they actually were humping on them mostly you know they symbolically married them because she had a higher number now if she married a man with a number they they could have you know quest for the the throne and stuff by doing that and so if he just uh, marries the most eligible women out of the group and he has the highest male number then you don't have to worry about it. And this goes all the way back to a Sumerian thing where the leader is 60 and then down to 50 at Enlil and 40 at Enki and it goes on down from there. And women had five numbers in between, i.e. 55, 45, 35, and so on. Um, now, or we're looking at here, the continuity between the Mycenaeans and living people is particularly striking given that the Aegean has been the crossroads of civilizations for thousands of years says co-author George Stamatoyanopoulos. And I'm guaranteeing you that the people there call him Professor S. Or Dr. Stam. And that's about all we're going to do. You have somebody named Siebenhausen, and you just call him Mr. C. Right. Um, he's at the University of Washington in Seattle. The, this suggests that the major components of the Greeks' ancestry were already in place in the Bronze Age. After the migration of the earliest farmers from Anatolia set the template for the genetic makeup of the Greeks, in fact, most Europeans. And I'm telling you that it's not just Anatolia that they came from. That the people that, you, that they're saying now were in Anatolia were far spread more to the east. And when they pulled in, they became the people far spread to the west. You put a chunk of butter on a piece of bread, you smear it to the left. Right. The spread of farming populations was the decisive moment when the major elements of the Greek population were already provided, says archaeologist Colin Renfro of the University of Cambridge in the United Kingdom, who was not involved with the work, but into the study. The results also show that it's possible to get ancient DNA from the hot, dry landscape of the eastern Mediterranean. And indeed, we found that. They can get it in ear bones and things, and we've gotten a lot out of mummies we thought we could never get. So it's kind of neat. Um, he, uh, he and others now have hope for getting DNA from groups such as the mysterious Hittites who came to ancient Anatolia sometime before 2000 BC, and who may have also been the source of the Caucasian ancestry in the Mycenaeans and early Indo-European languages, in the region and I'm telling you that it probably comes from a little bit more east than that too and the same people but also those same people spread out a little east then came back west archaeologist Christian Christensen of the University of Gothenburg in Sweden who was not involved in the work also agrees she makes an important statement and says the results have now opened up the next chapter in the genetic history of Western Eurasians, that that is of the Bronze Age Mediterranean people and the Levant. 
and it points over towards Sumerians, and they're just trying to slowly leak this out, because they already have some Hittite. I know it. I'll do a video on it. They have a few of these guys. All they got to do is look and cross-reference, and then they've got their database, and all they really have to do is have to punch it in, and it'll say, these are like, these are like, these are like, and take somebody who's an analyst of it, and you can really see the truth of it and where it comes from one and traits show up and a lot of times traits will show up a couple of generations later too from inbreeding that keep continuing in certain places they've seen that happening through the dutch people and germans along with the uh northern british but that's it for this one guys anyhow i just thought i'd share that with you it's something that's kind of new to me uh one thing that i do uh you know i've got a bunch of old things and hearsay and stuff this genetics is really making a difference in the ball game here because I can sit and tell you all day long that these people came once a long time ago from the east. And they were there for a long time. And then another migration had come in during that time. And then a third wave. And that's what makes up your Greeks of ancient times. And then the Trojan War and all those things. But it seems like conjecture till somebody shows you genetics and goes, yep, they were like this, they were like that. They didn't change much because they used to be the same damn people almost. Just slight variation. And then... Those guys were the ones that invaded them. Kind of interesting, though. We'll continue with this. Just throwing that one in there. Peace.